welcome back to Skyway Bound Presents Fly Tampa Fly. Thanks for joining us today. We're we're a podcast, a video podcast dedicated to to promoting the growth of aviation, small business aviation, aviation small businesses within the greater Tampa Bay area. And I'm your host, Walter Matthews. So so welcome. So we're gonna move on. Let's get this show rolling today. And let's begin with our first question of the day. The portion in this figure that's shown, the portion of the runway identified by the letter A may be used for A, a landing, B, takeoff and taxiing, or taxiing and takeoff, C, taxiing and landed. We'll have prizes eventually. I know I say that all the time, but we don't have prizes yet, but stay tuned and and uh you know shoot your answers in the comments we're not doing this live so i guess it doesn't matter you're going to get the answer at the end all right let's begin with some general news some aviation news the faa had instituted a a rest policy and they decided to delay those requirements for air traffic controllers to get at least 10 hours of sleep and the rules, the rules have been put in place, but after an, you know, they've been put in place after an independent review of fatigue issues called for the new minimum rest periods. However, the FAA is, is struggling to address a, a persistent shortage of air traffic controllers in a series of near missed incidents. And then there was some, there was some pushback from, from the air traffic control. There, not a, not a. Uh, not a union. Well, actually, I think it is a union. I think it is a union. What did it say here? Yes, the National Air Traffic Controllers Association Union gave some pushback as well. So they're looking to work together and to come up with an agreement, a joint agreement on new rest periods, and they're hoping to have that done by the 2025. But in the meanwhile, the rest policy that we had talked about last month has been put on hold. So there's some FAA air traffic control news for you. All right, the FAA has come out with its new airman certification standards. And if you will put it in the link in the description, that will take you directly to the FAA, to the FAA website with the new airman certification standards. Those of you who are already taken, taken flight lessons, you know that these are the standards of which you're, of which you're graded. And there, you know, there's some, there's some inter if you've already been working under the standard, especially if you're in a private, there's not a like big, big changes, but there are some changes. For example, for example, electronic flight bags. There's a specific line that talks about if you use it for for cross countries, you know they're you know, they're going to test you on your knowledge and your ability to actually use the electronic flight bag. Those of you who know me, I use for flight. That's what I use, but. But uh, those of you who are taking ever you know taking tests under the new Emirates certification standards, you definitely will need to be able to be able to talk through through that. And then there's a bunch of other standards. I will put in the description below. So I so I found a website. Where was it? I think it was Sporties. Sporties on the Sporties blog. I they gave like a brief brief rundown of some of the major the major changes in the Emirates certification standards and they broke it down by the specific by the different different uh, we'll call it booklets if you will like you know instrument versus commercial versus private pilot they have a good little base breakdown that can give you a, you know it's a great library so we'll put that description in the link so you guys have a quick way to go yeah you, know, you don't have time to read the hundreds of thousands of FAA pages you have this outline to kind of guide you and help you all right all right, here's some good business news, and we are a small, an aviation small business channel, if you will. So we like to talk about business news. Global Jet Capital is, they're a, well, they're, they're basically, they're, I think they're a research company. But they forecast that the business jet market is going to reach $193 billion in total new and pre-owned transactions between 2024 and 2028. Uh, they released a, a forecast recently, and uh, they're anticipating that the market is going to continue to grow again. Apparently, it had contracted for the past couple of years, but now it's kind of back on track 
poor growth. The reason we throw that out to you guys is if you're interested in getting into that, to the small jet, small business jet world, the opportunity might be there to either start your own thing or to go work for a company like this and maybe gain some experience and then get in, then go and start your own thing. But anyway, the opportunities exist. The opportunities to make a lot of money still exist in the world of aviation. So that's one reason we want to highlight that for you today. And those of you who know, who follow me, know I'm big into the electric vertical takeoff and landing machines. That they, they're already here. I wish this was happening in Florida, but it's not. California-based Mighty Fly recently announced that the company has obtained an industry-first FAA authorization, granting it permission to test its recently unveiled 2024 Centro within a flight corridor between, that's in California, New Jerusalem Airport and Byron Airport. So that's probably, it sounds like it's in a, they have like private, private numbers, 1Q4 and Charlie 8-3 in California. The, the approval was obtained in March. It's the first for a large self-flying cargo EVTOL, EVTOL, in the United States. I throw that out there because I'm hoping that somebody here in Florida will jump on the wagon and start uh, pressing for something similar here. If this is a, if you want to get into the world of hauling cargo, you know, this is a, well, that's our competition there in, uh, in California. I mean, come on, we're Florida. Why can't we beat California? Let's do it. Let's do it. But it's pretty cool. Those of you who are, aren't following, the, these machines are coming and they're already here. All right, here's a little news about Lilium. I'm big on Lilium. I like Lilium because they have those little those little jets instead of the blades. I, I, just, I just think they're I just think they're cool. But they recently reserved received an order of 20 eVTOL jets, and they formed an operational partner with a company. What's the name of this company? Up oh, Urban Link. Urban Link is based out of the Miami uh, the Miami area. Yeah. The flagship Illinium jet, they're, they're planning verta, verta ports in South, in South Florida, and the goal is forming a regional air taxi network by 2026. So there we go. There's some good news for, uh, for the small business world and the aviation small business world within the state of Florida. And eventually these guys are, Lilium's hoping to build up to about 100 FBO fixed-based operator terminals nationwide, but they're starting with Urban Link in the South Florida, the Miami, the Miami area. <clears throat> all right, I put this in here because it's kind of cool and it's kind of fun and we're all about business here. These are some stocks. There's, if you see one that I'm missing that has to do with the electric vertical takeoff and landing industry or world that you'd like to see up here, this is not real time. It's just to kind of keep our minds in the game of, you know, building a business. There's investment. There's investment involved. There's, and this this is a big. This is a part of it. So people are trading. Some of these companies are public, of course, if they're listed here. And if you're looking to build a small aviation business company. Maybe it's your dream to build into something that becomes, you know, that goes public eventually. Uh, that's one I, I put this in here to kind of inspire you to, if you want to build, you want to build a company that goes public, do it. You could be, you could be kind of like one of these guys, one of these guys here, and sky's the limit. All right, here's another, another state is beating Florida. Minnesota allows flying cars on roads. Minnesota is set to become the second state to formally accept flying cars as a category of vehicles that are allowed to use the roads. I throw this in here because I want Florida to win. I want Florida to win. So hopefully there's somebody out there. I, I think that company, I think it's called Durrani, <clears throat> and I think they're also in the Miami area. So they're, they're working on something like this as, you know, working something like this as well. Uh, hopefully they can. Hopefully we can press forward, and maybe maybe Florida could become the third state to allow flying cars on the road. I mean, I'm I'm personally interested in in having a flying car because I just one I don't want to deal with TSA, and two I don't want to deal with I4 I75 traffic. 
and this would help me bypass all of that. So I'm very excited about the future with regards to these kind of vehicles and uh, I'm looking for the financing to uh, the funding so I can be an early adopter. Stay tuned. All right, typical aviation events. There's a bunch of events here. I started adding some international events as well. I think I got one, uh, looks like San Paulo, Brazil and uh, the United Kingdom. Those are big aviation industry events. If you're looking to start in an aviation small business, you do want to start attending some of these aviation industry events. You want to start networking and getting to know people and seeing what, I mean, when you go to these events, you're really going to see what the potential is for the future within, within the industry. So I highly encourage you. Obviously, it's expensive. You can't go to all the events. Some events you can only go to if, if, you, if you're invited. But a lot of these events you can go to and maybe get like a one-day pass and, and just, just meet some people in the industry. Oops. I got all sorts of buttons here. Good news for air race fans everywhere. The air races, I'm not sure if they were kicked out of Reno or what, I don't know the politics behind that, but you now can go to New Mexico in 2025 to watch the air races. And yeah, that's all I got to say about that. The National Championship Air Races have a new home, Roswell, New Mexico. So you see my little, uh, I've got to, I'm trying to point in the right direction. <laughs> Over there, see my little alien. That's kind of celebrating, celebrating the air the the air races in 2025 in Roswell, Roswell, New Mexico. All right, scholarship opportunities as always. Federal Aviation. We, we'll put the link the link in the description below. I'm not sure if they add new ones, but. You know, this is kind of one of our standard slides. Same thing, scholarship. We haven't added anything new, so if you hear of any scholarships that we don't have on this, please shoot me a note and we'll add, we'll add it to the slide. We always want to continue to build out this list and, and make sure we're helping people become aware of the potential opportunities to gain scholarships because, well, flying is expensive. Everybody knows that. All right, back to our question of the day. I feel like this thing's moving on its own. The portion of the runway, the portion of the runway identified by the letter A may be used for A, landing, B, taxiing and takeoff, or C, taxiing and landing. Survey says, Taxiing and takeoff. So on this one, I went to. I should have put. I should have put in the. Uh, I should have put it in. I'll put it in the description. It's going to be AIM 2-3-3 runway markings, uh, subsection. I think it's a sub of a subsection number two. Displaced threshold. A displaced threshold is a threshold located at a point on the runway other than the designated beginning of the runway. Displacement of a threshold reduces the length of runway available for landings. The portion of runway behind a displaced threshold is available for takeoffs in either direction and landings from the opposite direction. A 10, we a 10 feet wide white threshold bar is located across the width of the runway at the displaced threshold. White arrows are located along the center line in the area between the beginning of the runway and displaced, displaced threshold. White arrowheads are located across the width of the runway just prior to the threshold bar. So what's key to that is clearly it's not for taxiing and landing or just landing. It's for taxiing and takeoff. So, you know, you heard you heard us say and landings from the opposite direction. So that's that's kind of confusing. It, it can well, it can be confusing, you know, so if you're landing this way and there's a displaced threshold on this end, of course, you should have already landed, touched down, and slowed to a taxi speed by the time you're on this end. That's the only thing I can think of. If anybody has another reference that gives that exact word that is taxiing, 
taxiing and takeoff, please let me know. I'll keep researching as well. I did try to do some, some basic research. I couldn't find that specific wording about taxiing and takeoff. All I could find is, is a takeoff for takeoffs in either direction and landings in the opposite direction. And I guess that's one of those where the FAA allows you to, to deduce that landing in the opposite directions means by the time you get to the end, where the displaced threshold is, you're probably at taxi speed. And who knows? I don't know what the FAA is thinking, but the, I'm not in charge. All right, so that does it for us today. As always, we wanna thank our sponsors. Thank you to the team at Jetline. I am not in the Jetline, in the Jetline uh, office today, and that's okay. Every now and then I film this from a different location. But thank you to Jetline for allowing me to spend time in, the, in their offices, use their offices. And sometimes I have students there and I've got a little simulator because those of you who know me know I'm really into simulators. And these guys can help you with all your aviation flight simulator needs. They are the, the, US, the US distributor of Verpal flight controls and the US distributor of, of virtual, fly, virtual Fly, which produces a bunch of, bunch of flight, you know, you know, flight simulators and simulator equipment. So they, they, if you have any, if you have, even if you have basic, basic uh, personal computer needs with regards to flight simulators, give them a call. They they will point you in the right direction. And I'm obviously I'm a huge fan of of Jetline systems. As hopefully they're a fan of mine. Actually, I know they are because they let me use their office. Thanks again to my friends at Mind My PC. If you're looking to start a business. Come on, do you want to be, unless you're, if you're starting an IT business, that's different, but most of you aren't. So why do everything on your own? Why, you know, let the experts do what the experts do best. Let them be your fractional IT CTO. That way you can scale the business and do what you do best. So call my friends at Mind My PC and let them help you with your technology. It's cybersecurity and IT and IT is, is an industry that's not going away anytime soon and it's becoming bigger and bigger and more important. And if that's not your focus and you have something else that you're making money at that's your focus, then let, let an expert be part of your team, even if it's just on a fractional business. So give my friends a give my friends at Mind My PC a call and let them help you out with all your with all your cybersecurity and IT type, IT needs. Thanks again. That's me. If you're looking for, if you're in the greater Tampa Bay area, looking for some sort of flight lessons, or if you just have questions about aviation, if I don't know the answer, I will point you to somebody that does. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thanks for joining me today. And we look forward to seeing you guys next time. As always, I want to encourage those of you, if you're looking to start something, just start. If, if all you can do right now is start with research, just start with something and just get moving. You don't want to look back on your life with the regret that you didn't at least try. You got a small business, just try. Just don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. Do not quit, do not quit, do not quit. I always say the sky's the limit and I 100% believe that. So get out there and, and uh, go ahead and make something happen.